If you have Windows 11, you find Microsoft Power Automate Desktop by going to Start, search for Power Automate, and in case you see this icon, you have Power Automate Desktop installed. In case you don't see it, don't worry, we will install it now. Go to a browser, navigate to Google, search for Power Automate Desktop download and click enter. Pick the first hit. Scroll a little bit down to download the Power Automate installer and click it. That will download the executable up here. Once it's download, open up the file. This will start the installer. Here we click next, click I agree and choose to install. That's it. Now we enable the browser extensions. This is for Power Automate Desktop to work with your favorite browser or browsers. I pick Microsoft Edge here. I'll say get, add extension, and we have it now. You can also choose to add, for example, Google Chrome. We will add that to Chrome and add the extension. Now we can automate in browsers. I'll close down Chrome again. And here we will click launch app. In case your language is non English, like mine here, we need to change it before we start. So close down Power Automate Desktop again. Go to your start menu, search for language. Here, language settings. I'll open it. Here we will need to install a new language that will be English. You can see mine is Danish at the moment. I'll say add a language. I'll search for English. I prefer the US English, but it's not. You can also pick the United Kingdom. I'll click here and choose next. You can choose to only install the language pack. That is all we need. Then we click install. That's it. Now you need to move English in front of your other language. This might install a weird looking keyboard. We can also change that. So click the three dots here, language options. And instead of this US keyboard, I install my local keyboard. So I say add keyboard. I'll find the Danish one, which is here. Pick that and remove the US keyboard. Let me go back again. So we have the English in front. I can close my language settings. I go down to the tray, find the Power Automate icon here. I right click. I'll say exit or Ausschluss. That's exit in Danish. Now I go to the start menu. Here I'll search for Power Automate. I prefer to right click and pin to taskbar. Then I have it here on my taskbar so I can always start it quickly. But Let's click to start. Now we in English. Go up here and click new flow. We will call it our first robot and click create. Let us maximize this. We are now ready to build our first robot. You'll often hear the robot is called something like RPA, a script or a flow. It all means the same. In the middle here, we have the canvas. Here our robot is getting built. To the left, you'll find predefined code blocks. For example, if I expand this Excel, you can see some Excel actions and I can even go into the advanced. You'll see even more. Let's start by opening up a web page. So I go up here to actions and search actions. That is how we usually find our actions. Don't worry, you will get used to these names. Here you'll find a launch new. I go with Edge because that's my favorite browser. But you can find choose Chrome for this example or Firefox if you install that extension. Just never go with Internet Explorer. That one is outdated. Here we need a URL in the parameter. Let's go with HTTPS colon two forward slashes booking.com. Down here in the variables produced, you can click this arrow. And here 
we can see that this action produce a browser variable. Variables are characterized with a percentage signs in the start and in the end. This one is called browser. We can later on refer to this variable if we want to use this browser instance again in the robot. Now click save. Go click run here. That will open up a browser and navigate to booking.com. Let's do a search here. So I go back to Power Automate Desktop. Up here in Actions, you'll find a populate text field on web page and drag it in. You can see here that we're working in the web browser instance browser. This was the variable that got produced in the launch new Microsoft Edge. We'll need to fill in a UI element. A UI element is everything you see on your screen and in your browser. So if you click this drop down and say add UI element and a UI element picker shows up, I can move it over here. And when I hover my mouse over different elements on this web page, you can see the red border around it. That means that they are UI elements. Here I want to find the input text like here. Press Ctrl on my keyboard while it's still red. Click left with my mouse and a UI element is getting created. Where do I want to search? Let's pick Copenhagen like this and click Save. Now we can run our robot again by clicking Run up here. That will open up Booking.com and fill in Copenhagen in the search field. Now we need to click search over here. So we go back to Power Automate Desktop. You will find a click link on web page and drag it in here. Now you'll see that these actions are performed sequential. That means that first we launch the browser, then we type something in with the populate text field, and now we click something. Again, we work in the browser instance. Click the drop down again add UI element. Now we will find the search button. It's right here. You can close this one if you prefer. It doesn't really matter. Here we will take this button. Once this is red, we press control on our keyboard and left click with our mouse. You can even see that the click type that is left click, that is the most default click. We'll just let it be here and we'll click save. Try to click run up here again. Again, we're opening up, we're searching for Copenhagen and we will click search. There you go. We have, if I just go here, we have now the Copenhagen search results, but we're not ready. We want to scrape this title. We also want to scrape the review over here and amount of reviews. Not only that, we want to do it for each hotel here in Copenhagen, at least on the first side. Let's go back to Power Automate Desktop. Over here in Actions, you will find an extract data from web page. And as you can see here, I only type in the first characters. Then these shows up and I can easily find it here, extract data from web page and drag it in. What I need to do now is to open up my search results. So I go to my browser and find the latest one. You can see we opened up three browser instance with booking.com. That's fine. We will make our robot close it later on. Just click the search result. And now you can see a live web helper shows up. Again, we will need to tell it what do we want, but this time we won't click control. Pick the first title. That is Motel 1 Copenhagen for me. Maybe you have another hotel. So right click and as you can see here, it says diff. That's fine. Right click, extract element value. Go over here where it says text Motel 1 Copenhagen. And you can see it shows up over here in the live web helper. It all it's also got green border dotted border around it. Now go to the next hotel. Here it's important that it says diff again and not, for example, like uh, this one here, diff. So the smallest diff again. Right click, extract element value and pick this one. Boom, 
we now have all the hotels over here on this side. That was easy. Now I also want to review over here. So go up to the first hotel, right click, extract element value. Here it says text 8.4, click it. Boom. Because we already defined the pattern, we only needed to say that this is the review. Power Automate Desktop automatically finds it for all the rest of the hotels. Now I need this amount of reviews. So go up here. Again, right click, extract element value and pick the reviews here. That's it. We have the data we need. We click finish. And in this extract data from web page, if I scroll a little bit down, I can save it to a variable or if I click this drop down to an Excel spreadsheet. The variables produced is now an Excel instance variable. We can later on refer to this variable if we want to use this created Excel spreadsheet. Now click save. We can now click run up here. A web page opens. We search for Copenhagen. We click search or rather our robot does. And now our robot starts extracting the data. There you go. It's that easy to use Power Automate Desktop. Let's close down the Excel once more. I just choose to don't save it. Before we do anything, let our robot close the browser. So I go back here. In the actions, find a close web browser and drag it in in the end. This one will just close the web browser instance saved in the browser variable. That was the one we created up here and we used a couple of times. I click save here. Again, we can run our robot. We usually run our robot once we build a step or two just to see that everything works. That is better than create 20 steps and find out something is wrong. There you go. Our browser closed. Let's close the Excel once more. Let's save this Excel sheet to our desktop. To get our desktop path, we can either provide our robot with it or we can search for a get special folder and drag it in here. Here I can choose to get the path of, for example, my desktop, my history, that is this one. But since we want a desktop, let's go with that. The variables produced as per default special folder path. But click this arrow, click in this variable and say desktop path. You don't need to put in the percentage signs in the start and in the end, because if I click away, Power Automate Desktop automatically placed them there. Now you can click save. So now we have the desktop path. We can choose to save the Excel sheet there. So go up here, find a close Excel and drag it in in the end. Here you can see we close down the Excel instance and let me move this one down here. That Excel instance got created up here when we extracted the data. Before closing Excel, choose to save the document as. Here we can provide a document path. Since we already got the first part that it was the desktop path, I can click this little X over here, double click the desktop path like this. Then I just need to tell Power Automate Desktop the file name. So I'll say backward slash and then I'll say hotels Copenhagen and then I'll need to say dot XLSX. That's the ending of an Excel book. Then I can click save. Again, we will run it to inspect that we can now save the data to our desktop. So we know this works, but we still need to run it in order to get the data to our Excel sheet and have the Excel instance created in the first place. There you go, it closed Excel, we could see that. If I minimize this, and yes, we have a few booking.com windows open. Let me just close these ones. Our robot will close them from here, but these ones were the first one we created. If I double click this, now we saved it to our desktop. 
let's also see that we can easily attach this Excel book to an email. I'll close it again, move back to Power Automate Desktop. Double click the close Excel to open it. We will grab this path, so I will mark it, Control C to copy it, and we'll move out. Then you'll find a launch outlook here and drag it in. This of course requires that you have Outlook installed on your local Windows instance. This action will create a variable called Outlook instance. That's fine, I'll click save. Now we can send an email. So I'll find a send email message to Outlook and drag it in here. Here we will fill in some parameters. The first one that is the attachment. I can just go here, control V that will paste in the place of our attachment. We know that because we just saved it to here. Then we need an account. That is the data file of your Outlook account. So if you go to your start menu, search for Outlook, open it. Go up here in file, account settings, account settings, data files, and this is the account name. Often it's just your email address. So mine is Anders at Anders Jensen org. Let me minimize this. So what I'll do here is that I will do this in the to, I will say Anders at Anders Jensen org. I will just send this email to myself and not spam anyone else. In subject, I will say today's best hotels. And in the body, we could say something like attached is the extracted hotels of today like this. Click save. And now we can run and inspect once more. So all of this we know works. But the important step now is to see that Outlook automation also work. So now we're closing and saving Excel, we're launching Outlook, and we send ourselves an email. Let me open up Outlook once more. There you go. We have now automated Outlook as well. And I can double click to open the Excel. That's the attachment that we wanted close this one here and I'll also close Outlook. There's no auto save in Power Automate desktop. So remember to click save here and there when you want to save your flow. Power Automate desktop will also prompt you to save if you try to exit the program without having saved it. Once that is done, you can click the X up here in the corner and we will open up the console once more. If we are in home, we can always find our previous build flows in my flows. Here you can see our first robot, which we just created. If you go to examples, take web automation, double click the take screenshot of web page, that will open up a flow Microsoft created say got it. This is great when you want to practice Power Automate desktop and you don't know all the actions. Try to click run. We will give it a web page. I'll say anasjensen.org. I'll say OK. It will open up the anasjensen.org web page and now it will take screenshot from the entire page. And here you can see it stored the screenshot on this. I'll mark it, so mark everything, control C, then I'll find my file explorer like this. I'll just go up here, control V, paste it in, click enter. There you go, that's my screenshot. I can minimize this again, go back to my robot, click OK, the robot will finish. Now you should learn more Power Automate Desktop. Click the next lesson, which is right here on the screen.